The Modified Kearney Fallout Meter Why would anyone want to build their own fallout meter? Each year, more nuclear bombs are being manufactured, and some of them by unstable governments like Russia and North Korea, who have recently threatened to use them on us. If the unthinkable happens, parts of the United States would be covered with radioactive dust particles. How will you know if it's safe outside? How will you know if your home or shelter is safe? The Kearney Fallout Meter, or KFM, will reliably give you this information. It was developed by Crescent H. Kearney at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Mr. Kearney states, a KFM is more accurate than most civil defense instruments, and its accuracy is permanently established by the laws of physics. After building five KFMs, I've learned a few things that I thought might be helpful to others who want to build their own. So here is my version of the Kearney fallout meter, the modified KFM. How it works is when you rub a PVC pipe with wool or acrylic material, it imparts a static charge to the pipe. When you transfer this charge to a couple hanging aluminum leaves, they push away from each other. As radiation bounces around inside of the can, it reduces the amount of static between the leaves, causing them to move closer to each other. By measuring this movement, you can determine the amount of radiation in your location. Here are the tools and supplies you will need. Epoxy quick set glue, regular aluminum foil, not heavy duty. Blue indicating silica gel, it's cheap on eBay. Thin vinyl gloves, a lid to an eight ounce can of baking powder, an eight ounce can of tomato sauce, clear packing tape, a 14 inch long piece of one inch PVC pipe, a wool or acrylic glove, electrical tape, a couple feet of two to four pound fishing line, also cheap on eBay. Two pound is best. It must be clean and free of oil and dirt. A push pin. A three inch piece of 14 gauge solid core copper wire you can find cheap at Home Depot. A scissors. A divider or a geometry compass for drawing circles. A hobby knife. A black permanent marker and clear vinyl tape. Also a glue gun masking tape, a needle nose pliers, spray adhesive, a thin cheap band-aid, white out type correction fluid or white model paint and a brush, a ruler, a fine toothed hacksaw blade or a small flat needle file, and a toothpick. A small packaging box that has a very clear flat piece of plastic to cut a window out of. I use a cheap dollar store cotton swabs package. You will also need an accurate timer or stopwatch to determine the level of radiation. The most important thing you will need is a copy of Crescent H. Kearney's informative book, Nuclear War Survival Skills. You can find it for free at nuclearwarsurvivalskills.com. You will need it in order to print out four pattern pages also, the book will help you better understand how to use the KFM. There are other patterns available from other sources, but I have found Mr. Kearney's original patterns to be the best. Once you get to the website NuclearWarSurvivalSkills.com, download the file. Open up the file. Then go to page 233. Select the printer icon. Then in the pages box, type in 233. Make sure the actual size box is selected, then print out the page. Measure the length of the can label. It should measure 8 and 3 16 inches long. If it is off by more than 1 16 of an inch, go back and print another copy 
But in the Printing Properties window, select Custom Scale instead of Actual Size to increase or decrease the size of the label. Reprint it and measure it again. Once you have the correct size, print out pages 237, 241, and 245 as well. You are now ready to build your KFM. Carefully cut out one of the KFM labels from page 233. Then cut out from page 237 the square-shaped 8-ply leaf pattern and one of the millimeter scales. Then one of the instructions to operators on page 245. To make the ionization chamber, open up and empty the tomato sauce can. Wash the inside, then dry it, and remove the outer label. Tape the upper left corner of the KFM label to the can where the seam is located. Wrap the label tightly around the can and hold it firm. Take the push pin and push it through the can in the four locations marked holes for stop threads. Mark the top of the lip on the opposite side from the seam. Remove the label and set it aside for later. To prepare the stop threads, put on the clean vinyl gloves and remove 14 inches of 2 pound fishing line. Thread it through a hole. Pull it into the can and thread it through the hole that is across from the first hole. Then push the line through the hole that is one and one quarter inches away, back into the can. Then out the hole that is across from it, making a loop. The lines inside the can should be parallel to each other. Tie the two ends together tightly and cut off the loose ends. Slip a toothpick underneath where you tied the line and turn it until the tension on the line is fairly tight. Tape it in position to the outside of the can. Mix a couple drops of epoxy quick cement. Apply a dab to each of the four holes. Press the glue flat against the can. And let it dry. Take a small needle file or hacksaw blade and cut a couple notches in the can lip. One above the can seam and one where you marked it earlier. Make them about one millimeter deep. A square-shaped notch holds the fishing line better than a V-shaped notch. Carefully tear off two nine-inch long pieces of regular aluminum foil. Try not to crease, rip, or dirty the foil pieces. On a flat, clean surface, fold one piece in half. Then fold it in half again, careful to line up the first folded edge with itself. Fold it once again, careful to line up the previous folded edge with itself. Smooth out any wrinkles. Do this a second time for the other piece of aluminum foil. Place the 8-ply leaf pattern onto one of the folded aluminum sheets. Make sure the third fold of the aluminum sheet aligns with the bottom of the leaf pattern and one edge of the pattern also aligns with the second fold edge. Tape down the pattern to the aluminum foil sheet. 
With a single straight edge and a pin, score a line on the pattern's thread line. Carefully cut the aluminum foil sheet along the two edges of the leaf pattern. Cut off a 1 16th inch piece from each of the bottom corners on the leaf. Fold the leaf on the score you made. Then open it up most of the way. Do the same thing with the other folded aluminum sheet. Tape down the page marked 225 to your table. Place a 3 inch long piece of clear packing tape over the boxes marked tape here. Then place a 1 inch long piece of 3 quarter inch wide clear tape also over each of the boxes marked tape here. Folding a small amount of the edge will make it easier to pull off later. Wearing vinyl gloves, unwind a 12 inch long piece of clean number 2 fishing line and tape down the leading edge to the right tape here box making sure the fishing line is on top of the thread line on the paper. Pull the other end of the line so it is directly over the thread line and tape it down to the left tape here box. Unwind another 12 inches of line in the opposite direction, going back to the right tape here box. Make sure it is directly over the thread line on the paper. Tape both ends down again. You should now have two threads stretch straight over the marked thread line. Take an aluminum leaf and place it under the closest taped down fishing line, lining it up with the box on the paper. Place two dabs of quick set epoxy glue into the line crease. Fold down the leaf panel at the crease. Turn your paper around and do the same thing with the other leaf, gluing it down to the other fishing line. Cut out five one-eighth inch by one-half inch long strips from an adhesive bandage. Place three of them over the fold edge. Place one strip on the right edge 